Hey everybody, today I'm gonna to talk about macro filmmaking that's taking video of very, very tiny things. So it's our last day in the Amazon, and but I found this beautiful leaf cutter ant trail and I wanna to try to film some of these leaf cutter ants with a couple different setups. I'll slowly add pieces so you can see what it actually does to the video. So I'm doing this little tutorial for you to see what actually happens with different lenses and different macro setups. I come here into the rainforest, film a lot of different bugs. Often they're very small. And to do that, you have to have a macro setup. So I'm gonna walk you through how you would optimize and get the closest video possible. Uh, obviously you're gonna have a camera, but the first step in doing macro stuff is to get a good lens that can shoot macro. This lens right here is a 100 millimeter macro. And then I have this lens right here, which is a 50 millimeter macro. Both are from Canon. They both work really well. If you have a setup like I did, this is the Mark II, with a 100 millimeter lens, then you run into a limit on how close you can get. In little tiny ants, you can't get much closer. So I was like, how do you get closer? And I'll explain that to you. The second thing that you can do is you can add one of these little extender uh, lens setups from Raynox. You can get close to doubling your ability with a macro lens like this, and that snaps on like so. It'll do it on my 50 and on the 100. So that's kind of nice. Um, obviously there are some sacrifices in quality, but it, it's not too much. Next thing that you're, you can do is you can add extension tubes. However, I didn't bring any of my extension tubes because extension tubes drop the depth of field quite a lot. And when I'm filming little tiny bugs, and especially when they're moving, I, don't, I didn't really like the way it looked, so I left all of those at home. But what I did is I looked at the camera and I tried to optimize it for a macro setup. So this is a full frame sensor on these Canon Mark IIs and the Mark III that we're shooting on right now. Um, but Panasonic has a micro four thirds sensor. And so that has a crop factor of like 1.6, which is kind of neat. So it's zoomed in a little bit more. And then the last thing is that this Panasonic GH4 shoots in 4K. So I can shoot in 4K and zoom in even further. Um, also, one of the things that I like to do is I have this light setup. Light's really important for getting macro because you want to have the depth of field as large as possible, especially when you're shooting insects. <laughs> the last ingredient, which I really like, is you have just a really tiny flexible bag like this and you fill it with beans. I've got a whole bunch of lentils that I got locally here and then just filled it up. But that allows me to set the camera on the ground and then start to get some pretty cool shots. Also make sure you're in total manual mode on focus. A couple of the things that I'm doing on this camera to optimize my depth of field. I'm cranking up the aperture. Of course, that's what gives you a larger depth of field. I have these two lights which are set to daylight which is giving me a little bit more light. The closer you can get these lights, the better. And then I'm also cranking up the sensitivity as high as I think I can go. I'm only at 1600 right at the moment, but I can crank it up a little bit more, maybe to 32, because this sensor is pretty good. I feel like half the battle when you're shooting macro stuff is figuring out how, how to work with the insects. So here's some other macro bug shots we got along the trip. I hope you learned a little bit. I hope you're able to go out and get some bugs yourself. Um, obviously, there are probably other great setups that are coming out with new ones all the time. If you have some good suggestions, leave them in the comments section below. It'll help out me. It'll help out everybody else watching this video as well. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for more camera tutorials. How to do a time lapse, just a very simple time lapse. Today we're going to give you some tips about flying drones. It seems like everybody's got a drone now, but you gotta know how to fly it if you're gonna get some awesome shots. 